here we are in the home stretch. How did you do? If you wanted to construct a finite state automata so that it recognizes bit strings with an odd number of ones, I hope that you came up with something like this. Two states is all that's necessary. You may have had more, but from your start state, when you see your first, you continue to return to the start state upon seeing a zero, and when you see your first one, you land in the successful identification because you have one, which is an odd number of ones. But the next one you see is going to push you out of the positive successful state, and we might as well go right back to the very beginning, and each time we go from odd number of ones to even number of ones, we are going to flip back and forth between S0 and S1. If you eventually end up in S1, it means you've traveled that pathway uh, an odd number of times and you can be guaranteed of having an odd number of ones in your automata. The second question was a little bit trickier we wanted to have a particular bit string, in this case 101101, to be identified by our automata. The initial construction is fairly straightforward. I want to start with enough s states so that traveling identifying the bit string, the desired bit string of 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, ends me up at my um, accepting state. Now, before you ever start, uh, if you don't see a 1, obviously you're going to just stay right here in state 0. If you've seen a one, but now you're about to see a second one, you're sort of starting the path all over again. You've seen a one, you're looking for a zero. And if you've seen the entire sequence you're looking for, regardless of what you're going to find, uh, whether it's a zero or a one, let me get that right there, uh, whether it's a zero or a one, you are going to see uh, remain in the accepting state because you've seen the subsequence you want to see. Now, working through the rest of this is a little bit trickier. Uh, you sort of have to think about what kind of duplication you're seeing and exactly where you have to go back to. Uh, it's interesting here at the, the stage between S2 and S3, if, for example, we've already seen 1, 0, 1, uh, if I don't see a 1 but I see a 0, notice I've started off with 1, 0, which is the same thing here as 1, 0, so I could continue to look for the string starting from S2. So with that in mind, this is the um, finite state automata that I got to identify uh, the bit string 101101. Well, I'm fading fast, so I'm just going to give you a definition and a quick example of the last really important idea from this chapter, and that's non-deterministic finite state automata. Uh, it hasn't really changed uh, in its configuration. It's a five-tuple with a set of states, a set of inputs, a transition function, an identified initial state, and a set of accepting or final states. But there is one big difference in a non-deterministic finite state automata in that the function which matches a state and an input to, an, to a new state is now going to be a power set of all the states. So you, the machine will have to make a choice as to which option to follow. Uh, to make 
this a little bit clearer, let me give you an example of such a machine. So I'd like you to realize that here, if you're starting off initially and your input is a zero, you have two choices as to how to proceed. You can follow this loop and return back to S0, or you can follow this edge and move forward to S1. So there's choice involved. Um, where else is their choice? In S1, if you see a 1 as an input, you can choose either to go to S2 or to S3. Uh, in S3, you can choose to go to S... Uh, with an input of 0, you can go to S4, or you can go to S5. So this is what's meant by a non-deterministic finite state automata. Uh, and there's no reason that you only need two choices. You could have uh, a, a finite number of choices, two, three, four, five. But to keep things simple, I, I stuck with two choices for our example. Now, let's talk about what the transition function looks like. It takes as its input a state and an input value, in this case, uh, state S0 and an input of 0, and the output is a subset of states. So these are the states that you could reach with the input of 0. And in this case, as we saw already, the subset would be S0 and S1. Uh, if we were to look at some other possible uh, transition function inputs, at S0, at S0, state S0 with an input of 1, there's only one place to go, namely state 1. But the output isn't just state 1, it's the set containing state 1 because our function is now a function mapping to subsets. And finally, uh, if we want to look at state 3 and an input of 0, we have the option to travel to either state 4 or state 5. So if you were to write the state table down for our transition function, there would often be, uh, rather than just a single state in any entry, you would have a subset of states, which were all viable options. What does this type of automata do for you? What kind of language does it recognize? In this case, we're going to say that a word is recognized or, or accepted by this non-deterministic finite state automata if there is some path through the machine that ends in an accepting state. It doesn't mean all paths have to end in an accepting state, just some paths. So let's go to our final example and ask which of the following sequences are accepted by our example of a finite, of a non-deterministic finite state automata. Well, what about 0, 1? There's several choices here. If we start and follow by the horizontal with our 0 and then go to our 1, we end up at state 2, which is not one of the final accepting states. If we follow the horizontal for the 0 and then take the lower edge with the option for an input of 1, I end up at state 3, which is also not accepting. But if instead I start with the loop for 0 and end up following the horizontal for 1, this lands us at state 1, which is an accepting state. So we would say for this case that 0, 1 is in fact accepted by the machine. Now, in pink you noticed uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 was uh, also accepted, but you had to follow the root drawn out here. So you start with the horizontal 0 this time, follow the loop 0, take the upper 1, loop around twice, and then end with the 1 at S4 to be accepted. However, 1, 1 
and 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Did I say enough of those? 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, no matter which paths you follow, you end up at a non-accepting state. So those would be words that would not be recognized by this finite state automata. I recommend you check that out for yourself. So I'm going to leave you with one thought to prepare for the next class. Our non-deterministic finite state automata better at recognizing languages, more versatile at recognizing languages, or worse at recognizing languages than the deterministic models that we looked at in the previous video. Thanks for listening. I'll see you on Wednesday. We will think about this question and try and answer it, and then we will go on to Turing machines.